peace and welcome to Earth Crowns. Today I will be speaking about volume. Um, I've been getting a lot of emails and questions from different women asking me how is it that you get volume on your crowns? How is it that you shape your crown? And I bring up the word shape because uh, the volume is directly related to the shape of your crown. So how you shape your crown is exactly how you're positioning the volume on your crown. So volume is synonymous with shape. Um, and so, you know, there's different tricks on how to manipulate um, different uh, fabrics, different materials that are for making volume. And you can also make volume. What instrument do you have readily available? You don't need any extra things which you can use for volume, your own hair. That's exactly the, the oldest is your hair, what you use to manipulate the style that you want for your, um, uh, for your crown. Okay, and so that leads me to discuss, right, different types of hair within women. You, that's the first thing. Your style, your type of hair will determine how you manipulate it so that you can get volume for your crown. And, uh, you know, this leads, this leads me because I can't speak about hair type without providing a research context, a historical context um, of hair type. And um, two sources that are amazing to me um, that I always refer to is Elijah Muhammad's message to the black man. And in this book, Elijah Muhammad talks about two, uh, two distinct um, or two main black phenotypes from which original people originate from, meaning people of color originate from. And these two main uh, phenotypes, right, he, um, he describes as what we today would consider the modern day African and the modern day Indian from India, not Native American, okay? And um, when he describes these two phenotypes, right, when you look at an Indian from India, uh, that's where you see, right, the narrower phenotypes of original people. You see the long noses, right? You see the thin lips, um, and you see, right, variations of straight hair. Um, and obviously, right, you do see curly hair. I'm not um, generalizing um, because they're, you know, when you go to India, this is the problem with what I'm talking about right now is that I'm providing you a very general framework. But when you do go to India, you see the particularities of all colors of black in India. Okay, so you, but predominantly Indian, Indian people from India have what you would consider the narrow features, right, in the facial phenotype, and then the hair type varies from straight to curly hair, okay, and uh, tightly coarsed hair. Now, he also talks about what we would consider today the modern-day African, which, right, that's where we tend to associate the thick lips, the thick noses, the tightly coiled hair, um, and so when he talks about this, he does go more in depth in discussing, but these are the two main phenotypes that you find historically, you find in earlier times from which we can say, we can trace back and say, okay. And when we look at this research, we also realize that blackness has been diverse since the beginning of times. And Ivan Van Sertema, the great scholar Ivan Van Sertema, has spoken about this, has detailed um, in his book, Echoes of Ancient Africa, he discusses specifically the pygmies. The pygmies are an ancient civilization, an ancient peoples from Africa. When you study the pygmies, you see the diversity that they are exhibiting this between all the different shades of black and pygmies the pygmies already had this reality play now so you find very light seed pygmies and you find very dark seed pygmies and this precedes this is before the appearance of the modern day european man in europe this is before we start to see contact between europe and africa between europe and asia between um, 
uh, Europe and uh, modern day Latin America and the Caribbean and Central America. Now, um, I will also say that science have has proven there is scientific research um, that original hair, black hair, is also the hair that you see on Native Americans. It's also the so-called stray hair that you see on uh, Indian women, right? Or um, again, Native American women and some so-called Latina women. Because the thing about being a so-called Latina, right, coming from either the Caribbean, uh, the Spanish Spanish speaking Caribbean, the uh, Central America and South America is that um, the hair textures vary because we are many different people, right, under the umbrella of blackness meaning that we are very we are people that are expressing blackness through our unique phenotypes unless you know you can really trace your genealogy um strictly back to just europe um and not a moorish europe right because the moors were black so what does this mean what this means is that People of color, original people, black and brown and yellow folks already had what is considered to be European traits prior to contact with the Europeans, prior to colonization, prior to just any, you know, uh, independent migrations that might have occurred, what is being considered. So we have to really re-examine what blackness is, right? And um, what sisters like me, who might be considered, you know, white Latinas or whatever other sociological terminology you want to use to denote the yellow body of myself. Um, and so, you know, these are very good tools. Make sure you check out these books, uh, Message to the Black Men, Echoes of Ancient Africa. And I have tons of, tons of other references um, that will aid in that. With that, I, I wanted to discuss that because you cannot talk about women, you cannot talk about women of color be, be, with, without mentioning that hair type in the manifestation of blackness is extremely diverse. So that's the first, is the hair type. What is your hair type? Make sure you know what your hair type is so that then you can think to yourself, okay, so what are different ways that I can, you know, manipulate my volume? How can I make this volume happen? And one disclaimer that I will make is that, um, uh, the not only in in describing hair type right is that uh hair size and thickness are also playing a role with how you make your crown okay with how you make the volume for your crown so um that also is a factor that is tightly related to hair type so that's uh number two and um number three is um, obviously your cultural background plays a role in how you do your hair types because that also how you do your volume because that also um, you know it might be it might mean that it's not very popular to have you know big um, big volume crowns it so you might want to do right smaller crowns so you got to look at the cultural context that you are coming from in order to let it inform you of what type how much volume you want to use on your hair okay well on your crown not on your hair um, and in addition to that, not only is your cultural background playing a role, but your um, the weather patterns in you know the city or in the town or in the nation in which you live in. These will be very important in determining what type of uh, how much volume you want. You might want you might not want too much volume on an extremely sunny day. You might want to have uh, less volume. You know for those. Um, which, right, which also means what types of scarves, what type of fabrics you're going to be using during these days, right? Hot days, you don't want to be using thick scarves, thick fabric. You want to use the thinner scarves, the thinner fabrics. Um, so the same thing with volume. Do you want a lot of volume on that particular day or do you want less volume? And so that's, you know, that's really up to you to, um, determine that. Okay. So, um, uh, now what I will do is I will speak about the major um, techniques that I use um, during the um, 
during uh you know my times when i you know are get creative and, and start making my uh my crowns okay so um i'm gonna show you the different types of materials that i use and how i make my crown now let's say right because what i spoke about earlier right uh with hair type right with my hair type my hair type is not as uh my hair size is not as thick it's long but it's not as thick as it as used to be so um you know one technique that i use is on really hot days i do not like to use um uh any other caps i know you've seen me in previous videos with caps um i love the cap though because what the cap does is that it actually provides protection to the hair and the hair is no longer being pulled back by the the material that you're using for the wrap itself sometimes i won't use scarves i'll use fabrics and fabrics really can suck up the moisture from your hair so that's problematic as well is the sucking up of the moisture of um of your of your hair um and that can you know that's disastrous for the hair you don't want you want to keep the moisture in your hair you don't want it to dry out and so that's another reason why caps are extremely useful in the summertime this is um this is one of the things that i use this this is a cap it's called a volumizer okay and they're very popular um in israel and they're um they're used by mostly uh jewish women there are muslim women that wear this and this has become popular throughout the head wrapping world so a lot of women are starting to use this even those that are not religiously affiliated with any institution okay so it has a little what you see here is like this little pillow that it has and um it has uh right it's 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 very good this can slide off okay this can slide off so what i usually put when i put it on before i put it on what i do is is that i i wear i put on what you call a wig grip this is a wig grip it's also called a velvet headband and you basically just put it in like this okay it has a strap and you make sure that this is on your right side this is how you know that you've positioned it correctly because the, you want to have the end where nothing can penetrate it so that's you know the grip is that's the purpose it doesn't allow for any of your scarves to go back so throughout the day i used to have that problem where i would make a crown and the fabric would just end up sliding off and this prevents this and this is something that is um that is very uh popular um amongst all women um there's women that you know wear this um, with their, their for women that wear wigs right they wear this too so that the wig won't come off but this is um this is something that all women can use of all different hair types because all women of different hair types suffer from that where you're like but but it slides off you know it your hair doesn't have to be straight um for your for it to slide off okay so that's what I use. Um, other times I will just use this. I will just use the um, the wig grip, the velvet headband. And what I'll do is I'll manipulate my hair. So one of the things that I do is I make a bun up here. Okay. And then um, if I'm doing a turban style, right, I bring it up and I use my bun as a form, as a source of reference to where I will kind of have the center or mold the shape around it. Okay, if I want to have more space here because I'm trying to show some colors or show a design in the more of the front scalp, frontal scalp area, then my bun will be here. Okay, and um, if I want like a lower bun type wrap, then if I want to kind of show the fabric happening down here, then I will position the bun to be um down here where i currently have it at so and right and then you just take your fabric and you shape it using the bun as your modes of reference as your point of reference okay um another one that i use during the winter times that i like to use is um is this black cap it is it's much longer if you notice than the white cap it has a pillow to, and actually the pillow is more cushiony than the other one and it's it has a bigger um, circumference and the cool thing about this this cap this volumizer is that it comes already with the grip wig grip or velvet headband attached you can see it was sewn 
sewn on there okay and so i use this mostly in the winters right why because it absorbs heat it absorbs the sun rather than reflecting it um back like the color white does which is why i wear the white in the summer and in the warmer seasons right so um another thing that i do is um, is when I put the cap right if I don't want this will still give me good volume, right? So if I put it on right put it on um, It'll still give me good volume, but if you notice there is kind of like a space there So how do you stop from getting the space there? Very easy what I do is I take a scarf right any scarf so this is you know it's a this one is a rectangular scarf and I stuff what I actually do is that I stuff the cap with the scarf okay I stuff it and then um, I put it on and if you notice there is that extra padding there okay Ooh, sorry <laughs> um, so that's what I do, and you can do the same, I can do the same with this one if I wanted to, okay? But if I want less volume, I don't do that. Another thing you can do is, if you don't have a cap, what you can do is, you make your bun, right? Let's say I'm making, I want my volume to be up, right? I don't want my volume coming from the center, nor do I want my volume here in the back. What I do is, right, I make my bun very loose, always make your buns so that that they're not extremely tight that way you prevent from your you know your hair you know having to recede back so you know you put a very tight bun or ponytail right you put it here and then you can actually take a scarf right like this one and what you do is that you wrap it around your bun and here you have the padding right that you needed to make whatever crown it is that you need to make, okay? You can actually manipulate this. You can make a bun here, stick it here. Let's say you want it here, okay? So you have to become creative with it, right? And you have to take the things that I spoke about into account, right? Okay, if you want to, other tricks is you. if you get um, a volumizer like this, you can um, stuff it with one scarf but then if you want more, right, let's say you want more, then on the outside, you stuff, you stuff it again by wrapping another scarf around it and then, you know, using the fabrics that you're going to use for your um, wraps, for your crowns. Well, that's all I have for, for right now. You know, um, I want to write a, a blog on this in my blog. Um, because there's tons of things that I can definitely write more clearly about and discuss that is not being um, that I did not mention here but these are the four major contentions that I wanted to talk about today um, so thank you so much for joining me and um, I look forward to hearing your responses any other questions that you might have so peace and thank you for joining me today <laughs>